Hi everybody, this is Ellie. Thanks so much for joining me today for a video where I set up the month of May in my Wonderland 222 B6 planner. I have my planner in my Galen natural zip cover here. I will pull it out once I start, I'm sure. And I'm going to show you some of the things that I've pulled for this setup, and then I will switch to voiceover for the actual setup itself. I always like to start my setups with a Tombow or highlighter of the month. This is the Tombow 942. I've already used it this year and multiple times last year. It's one of my favorites. It's a warm beige that leans a little bit pink to my eye and I thought that would be really lovely for me. After I choose my Tombow, I do like to choose a washi palette. This is a tray I found years ago at a thrift shop, so I'm sorry there's no link, but it is perfect for washi tapes. So I've pulled out again kind of selections of the muted pinks that I think go with this neutral as well as some green because May always feels like a month of growth to me. So this one is from MT, Audrey Okea, Ally Brown. These are all from Note and Wish, Simply Gilded. And then here I have some of the stamp washi tapes from Black Milk or by Black Milk. I got them from Paper Plus Cloth. And then here I have samples that some friends have given me over the years, and I'm going to use some of the ones with the pinks, the neutrals, and the greens, hopefully. I have also pulled some stickers that I'd like to try and use. Not all of them, of course, but I like having options. So these from Rabbit Hole Handcraft. I love the spring-themed flower ones, and the girl with pink hair might be perfect. Audrey Okea, her spring stickers, as well as some of her sheets here. And then I also have some washi stickers from Note and Wish. I love washi stickers. They actually have some here with words. I'll probably lean more towards these neutral colors, but I might include a pop of green. We'll see how it goes. So this is everything I need to get started. Everything else is just spread around me in a big mess and I will try my best to chat through it as I go. I'm just going to go ahead and clear out my stickers, grab my notebook and pull it out because I do find it a little bit easier to work in this way. Because this is a dated planner, I obviously don't have to make my own layouts. So this is a less thorough setup than my bullet journal setups, but I do hope you still enjoy. The Wonderland 222 has a spread between each month where the left-hand side of the page is a review of the previous month and the right-hand side of the page is a look at the upcoming month. Or that's what they have titled there and you can use it obviously for whatever you'd like, but I do like to use it for a review and for a look ahead. I'm going to go ahead and stamp my titles. You might have seen I keep my stamps, these are from Amazon, in my Delphonics pouch, and I'm using a Versa Magic chalk ink in Midnight. I like having my stamps in that pouch because I keep it right in my planner tote, and having them easily accessible means that I use them much more often. I am simply titling my pages here. I have Reflect and Look Ahead. If you've followed me for some time, you'll likely recognize these prompts I'm going to use in the monthly reflection section. I found them on Stationery Squirrel's account. She has since changed her name to Zoe Diaz McLeese. And I've taken a few out and I'm left with some that really reflect what I'd like to remember when I look back. So I'm just flipping back and forth between my April pages so that I can copy out the prompts I need and I'm using a Zebra Sarasa vintage color. I like to choose a pen color that I feel like goes with my Tombow of the month, and sometimes it's an exact match, and sometimes they just complement each other. I also have my look ahead questions, and I will come back and fill that spread out in a little bit. Now I'm moving on to my monthly spread. I keep this very simple. I keep appointments, birthdays, events, anything big that I know is coming up and I would like to remember. I am using the monthly scripts from Planner Monkey Co. with that minimal font that is still one of my all-time favorite fonts. I like that and I also love anything with a typewriter feel. 
but I'm going through my stickers and trying to see what I would like to put down. It's funny because this is going to end up being such a simple spread, but I do like to go through my options, pull out a few. Right now I'm just kind of separating these sticker flakes into ones that I might want to use and some that I will definitely save for later. So really the ones that I'm pulling aside have that kind of neutral beige color or a little bit of pink. I usually like to do something in the kind of bottom left hand column and then I know I will put the script above that. So I'm going to play around with what I've pulled out. All those sticker flakes are from Audrey Okea. Oh, looks like I had a little fluff in my planner there. And I'm just seeing how these stamps fit, if I like the colors. That one has a little too much blue for me. This was a contender. I also have my rabbit hole handcraft out there. It's fun to just play around and come up with something that I like. So these sticker flakes are all absolutely beautiful and I know I will have a chance to use them somewhere. We've got the cherry blossoms there. I also have a couple of kind of individual flowers in that mini sampler. Some more rabbit hole handcraft. I really like the designs with the girl holding the flowers or kind of the wreath of flower around her. I'm just trying to take you guys a little bit through my thought process, but honestly, this is really relaxed. I find it soothing to just play around. I like the idea of having that branch coming down, but I do keep these pages pretty simple and I thought that might feel a little bit busy for me. Just pulling out some of the other sticker sheets I have here. So when I buy from Rabbit Hole Handcraft, you can choose the hair color and my hair is a very dark brown, nearly black, so I do get most of my character stickers with the black hair. I also have these, I guess, script or words or phrase stickers from Note & Wish that I haven't used much of but would like to use more of, so I do actually end up using one of those. As I was trying things out, I did also flip back and look at my old monthlies. You'll see that in a little bit. But I realized I do have kind of a formula that I like to use on these monthly pages. I like to have a kind of background sticker to anchor a character sticker, and then I might add a few other stickers just to make the page feel more complete. So what I've chosen here is a sticker from that Black Milk Project washi roll, and it's just mostly transparent with some green leaves or botanical feel, and I really like that. I wanted that hint of green, but I didn't want it to be overpowering. Then I chose one of the rabbit hole handcraft stickers, the girl with the pink hair holding some flowers, which I thought was lovely. Oh, here I am. You can see I'm flipping through, checking out my old pages, and I just like to keep things consistent, guys. When I find something that works, I usually stick with it for quite a while. The phrase I chose for this month is, there is no rush, which that's a reminder I always need. So those are washi sticker flakes, the phrases, and I just put it right at the bottom there. And I really like how that came together. Now that I have the main decoration for the page done, I am just going to see if there's any little bits that I would like to add. So I'm pulling out some of the cherry blossoms because this feels like the perfect month for them. I have a little one that I'm sticking right there above my phrase and I'm going to put down the May script to see if it feels complete with that or if I want to add anything else. I don't know how entertaining this is for you guys. I, I'm getting right into the, the nitty gritty here, I guess, but this is how I plan. I'm just trying to talk through it. I like how May looks. That flower at the top feels a little bit too big for me. So luckily I do have another option there on that sampler and just finding the right spot for it. And I'm really happy with how that turned out. 
It's got a little bit of pink, a little bit of green, some of those neutral colors, and it's great. It feels right, and I move on to the more functional part of the monthly spread. When I schedule appointments in the future, I just flip to that month and write them in pencil in case anything changes. So what I'm doing here is just erasing the pencil and rewriting them in red ink, which is what I always use for appointments so that they jump off the page. My signifier for appointments is a triangle, which I color in once the appointment is done. I'm also adding in birthdays. That sticker is from Planner Monkey Co. And usually I have all the birthdays in by now, but I guess I'm slow going for some reason this year. So that's pretty much it for the monthly. Like I said, very simple. And now I'm showing you how I set up my weeklies. This is the first full week in May, and I've been in this planner now since January, and I figured out for the most part what works for me. The way the weekly layout is set up, you have five full columns for each of the weekdays, and Saturday and Sunday are stacked. At the bottom of the spread, you'll see there's a horizontal line that kind of separates a bottom section in each of the five weekdays. And I use that section as kind of an overview for my week and my habits, and it is not day specific. So the first thing that I'll do is I will use my Tombow to make a header on the bottom right hand page. And I'll use a to do or a this week sticker from Planner Monkey Co for kind of a running weekly list that does not have day specific tasks. I have also pulled out my Cultivate What Matters Power Sheets. This is a goal setting planner that I've used since 2019 and I really enjoy it. It has monthly action items, weekly action items, and daily action items or habits. So I figured out how to put those in my planner in a way that makes the most sense for me. You'll see the first box on the right hand spread. I have written Monday through Sunday and put my daily habits down the side. What I'm working on right now is my monthly action items and those I mark off with progress bars. Just like in the Cultivate What Matters power sheets, I've just recreated it in a small form. And then as part of my to-do list, I write down my weekly action items and then I will add any other to-dos in the other column. This planner does have a whole separate page for tracking, but I have learned that it works best for me to have my trackers right on the pages that I'm in every week. Otherwise, I am not consistent. I also added in that final bottom square a sticker with a little Instagram icon from Planner Monkey Co. And I will write down any ideas for posts in that section. Now I'm just going ahead. I like to use the top section of the weeklies to write down any birthdays, events, or appointments. So I'm just referencing my monthly spread and going ahead and plugging those in. I'm still using the UniJet stream in the red for my appointments so that they jump off the weekly pages as well. The black pen I've been using in this video is the Zebra Sarasa Mark-On in the 0.4, which my friend Shelby recommended. I've been trying so many different pens in here and I like different aspects of all of them, but this one dries pretty quickly. It has a tiny bit of bleed through on occasion for me, but I am super heavy handed, so that is not surprising. And I'm really enjoying it. I think that and the Uni Dredge Dream in the 0.5 are my favorites so far. Now we've come back to the reflection page. I like to use those four rectangles on the left hand side to show any memories or highlights from that month. I'm looking through my sticker album. I do have a setup video where I show how I put this binder together, so I'll link it above. But I'm just choosing a sticker to represent some memories for this month. Well, for last month, I guess. So in April, I started stretching in the mornings and doing some very quick meditation, and I'm really liking that habit. We finished watching The Detectorists, which my friend Maria at A Papery Life recommended, and I loved it so, so much. It was just such a quiet and lovely and funny show. 
it filled me up and that is exactly what I needed. So thank you so much for that, Maria. What else? Oh, the Blue Jays season started. You guys know I love baseball. I do so much planning while baseball is on. And at the bottom, I put a charcuterie sticker by Crystal Create, which is so fitting because we enjoyed charcuterie outside for my mom's birthday, and that sticker instantly makes me think of it. Now I'm just filling in my monthly prompts. So if you can't see them, they are reading, watching, listening, creating, planning, needing, wanting, loving, not loving, wishing, trying, and inspired. Also, if you notice that my pen grip looks really uncomfortable, I told you guys I have a death grip and a very strange way of holding my pen. So the first time I filmed it, I was like, oh, that's what that looks like. But I still want to film for you guys. So I promise it's not as uncomfortable as it looks. My look ahead prompts are what would make this month fun? What would make this month satisfying? And how do I want to feel at the end of this month? Now we'll just take a look at the setup so far, the monthly, the weekly. I use little sticky notes as reminders ahead of time sometimes. And let's go and flip through the beginning. Oh, there's my color palette for the year. So I've already used this color in February. That doesn't bother me at all. If I like a color, I will keep reusing it. I'm just going to let that dry before I write the number down again. Here we have the yearly tracker. So I track movement, meditation, and my cycle. I'm trying to track YouTube videos, but I've been so slow this year. And these are the designated tracker pages I talked about. I am fine leaving that blank until I find a way to use that. I might put health symptoms in there if I need to, but only if I think it's useful. Otherwise, blank is totally fine. Now we're in my back pages, some notes, some brain dumps. When did I last? My baseball tracker, love it. Marvel tracker, so fun. These are some spreads I have not gotten into yet, but they're there for when or if I'm ready. I'm done with the setup in the planner itself, but I do always like to update the pockets in my cover. Again, this is the Galen Zipfolio in natural in the B6 size. Those are some scripts from Planner Monkey Co. Those are the ones that I use for my running to-do list. That is a card from Brandy Kincaid's Extravagant Hope Mailer, which I love. I also have some of Planner Monkey Co.'s icons that I use the most often. So we have Instagram, a television, a gift to mark birthdays, and a YouTube icon. Now I'm just taking out some of the things I had in there for April. April's color was this lovely light purple. So I'm just taking out the purple stickers and I'm going to take a look for something that goes with my Tombow color for May. Robin at Talks from the Heart was generous enough to send me some sterling ink and Randy Dot plans to try. So I'm grabbing a couple of sterling inks, transparent and I guess floral page flags, which are beautiful. They have kind of that more tan neutral color. I'm also looking for something that leans a little bit more pink. So these teardrops from Randy Dot Plans will be perfect as well. I just keep these in the Hobonichi A6 folders inside one of those mesh zip bags I show all the time. I find it a really easy way to kind of keep them sorted and be able to access them. So putting away April's, taking a look, I have some scripts in here. I haven't used any days of the week in my Wonderland 222 planner, but I think I might try. I have enough of them to <laughs> see if I like it. Here's where I get into the nitty gritty again a little bit. I don't want both of those page flags, so I'm just trying to decide which one I prefer. The one on the left actually has a little bit of blue in it, which you can't really tell on the screen, but I wasn't sure if I wanted that one or the one on the right, which looked a lot darker. I'm just comparing colors here. And then I'm going to actually pull one up to try. Because it's transparent, it's a beautiful, subtle effect. So that is the one I choose for this month. And I put the one with the hint of blue away for 
a month to come. Now that I've chosen my stickers, I'm going to put it all together. So this clear cover is also from Wonderland 222. And inside it, I have some printable paper I got from Etsy from a shop called BHL Design Shop. That cloud sticker from Ghost Puff is probably my favorite sticker ever. I love to move her into all my covers. I just slip that sticky note folder or pack in the back there. Putting my Randy Dot Plan stickers in the card slot. They fit, but they're a little bit tall, so I just switch it out so it's not covering anything up. Perfect. And then I keep my sticker sheets and my 2022 goals in that front pocket there. There's a spot for my Tombow, a spot for my pen, and I feel like I'm all done, but nope, I forgot to show you guys. I have Hobonichi Cousin sticker kits, and the boxes fit inside the Wonderland 222B6 size really well. They're just a tiny bit more narrow, which is fine by me. I just choose colors that go with the month, stick them on a reusable sticker sheet, and keep them in this cover, which honestly feels like a mini portable desk, and I love it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'd love to know if you would like to see more monthly setups like this. I know it's not as in-depth as my bullet journal setups, but I still had fun filming it. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.